um, good evening everyone um, well, uh, welcome to yet another session of the repeat of the first session um, my name is Jafar Lawal, the presenter. And previously, we had a session on ComCare, where we explained in details the fundamentals of ComCare and also um, some of the application building aspect what we'll be doing um, it's going to be a, a practice a direct practice on the application not only reading out the fundamentals and uh, for you to have access to come care you have to go to Come here, HQ, where you are supposed to create an account. You sign up and have um, a Come here, HQ for yourself. You have an account for yourself. That is the first step. But meanwhile, Come here is an application where you uh, is a kind of platform that gives you access to building applications. In this, in the sense that you don't have to be a programmer. You don't have to be a programmer before you can build application using ComCare. The aspect of the coding and whatever whatever has been taken care of. So you just need some little effort to come up with an Android application. It only uh, runs on Android so and you can create the either the android version or the well uh, uh, the web uh, version also or how do i put it uh, let's say just the web, uh, web web version so um like i said earlier you go to um come here hq where this is my hq as you can see from here you go to Comcare HQ and create your your account. You sign up and have an account. So let's go directly to my own HQ. If you have done the same, just go to Google and search for Comcare HQ, like the name implies here. So and create your own account. You sign up with your email, Gmail, and whatever, and have your own account. So after doing that, this is the kind of interface you are going to see from your own um, HQ. And what we have here at the top here is the dashboard. Then secondly, the report data user application. So also what you have here is still, this, is still a, repeated of, um, a repetition of what we have over there the application report data user setting and help so and the first thing you are expected to do when you are using comcare after creating your hq already you have it at the back of your mind the application you want to build mostly the comcare is being used to create um, um, a data collection application is a is a kind of data collection platform but not only data collection, you can do so many things. You can track commodities, um, track um, the foreign uh, workers, health workers. You can do so many things um, with ComCare. So it depends on your level of um, understanding and knowledge of the application for you to be able to build um, whatever you want to build. So now the first thing you are expected to do when you are uh, when you have come here 
already you have um, at the back of your mind the kind of application you want to build okay the first thing I expected to do is number uh, you go to from here from the right hand side here if you can see what I'm highlighting you can see the setting help and a bell so what we have here is what we are is what we call the project so you are expected to create a project whatever project you are going into so you build you you create the project from here yes you can see mine i have a project on ay jf that is my organization um, africa youth growth foundation um, this is another um, project i did for kogi ayg of kogi this is a project on child healthcare is another project when i was coming up practicing on my own this is one of the lessons i taught uh, people this is so you can see from what i have here those are projects i have created so you come to this place and create a name the project you want to do okay now let's go ahead to create um, add a project like i've clicked on add that is the first step you are expected to do so you name the project after creating a project uh, adding a project it will bring you to this um, interface so you are expected to name the project okay let me call it let me call this project a repeat repeat the first session first lesson let me just say lesson mm -hmm. okay, it's uh, now created a project I mind you when, while creating a project you should know that you cannot um, delete a project after creating it so far that I don't know if um, Comcare has uh, uh, created a way where you can delete a project but so so far I've known come here you cannot um, kind of you cannot delete a project after creating it sorry my internet is really fumbling I'm having issue with the connection um and yeah, you I, I know you manage uh, what I have for you this evening. I'm a kind of exhausted already. It's late. I need to rest. So I'm just coming up with this because of the too much request from people who have missed the first uh, uh, class. So I'm just making up for them with this. So my project is now created. It's now added. You can see this is repeat of the first lesson so if you look at the drop down of my projects i have selected this project good so now after adding a project so the interface you are seeing here all this now is is a kind of window for the project i have created so whatever i'm working on here goes to this uh, project this repeat of first lesson right so the next thing I expected to do after adding a project you come to application click on application now so you are now going straight into creating your application sorry I've skipped so many uh, fundamentals because as I told you this is going to be a, a real-time um, practice of come care so uh, so you will have to you have to be grabbing the some of the terms and also some steps from here and you can also go to dmagi academy to read ahead or read more on some of the things so i'll be skipping so many things but if you follow my steps these are the real steps you are expected to follow while trying to create a computer application so and if you have any question you can drop it I'll be I'll share a video on this class on YouTube so you can drop it on the comment so now this is my 
application so the first thing i'm expected to do you are expected to do is to name the application so you click on untitled application i'm going to clean this i will name this application as um, first lesson lesson right good you can also describe it you give it a description first lesson and come here whatever whatever so i don't i'm not i don't need that good so as you can see this is my first application so the next thing you have to do is you go to the to this side where you see this positive sign that is the module aspect so you create a module we have two items here the first one is the survey data collection once and also case list track items over time what this means is that for the survey you can see they say it is uh, said um collect data once for the survey it's just a one-time um, project thing or one-time application thing maybe you create application to be used just for that purpose you don't you will not uh, have to like revisit it later and do something with it it's not a case it's something it's not a case management application where you have to do a kind of follow up later uh, you get it so there is no follow up for that application what you create you once you create the this of the application it means you have created it for just that purpose and once you are done with whatever you want to do with the application that's all you don't need it for anything again and for case list case list is um, um a flow of application where you track items all the time if you have created an application that in most case list um, you are, at long run you can still um, flow it up you get is an application whereby you revisit all the time as in time to time whenever you want to use it you create an application for front like workers once they go to the field they administer it they still have to come back to maybe do something with it maybe if you create an application that enrolls patient so you have a first aspect where it will capture the enrollment and secondly to capture some other information so once we go into the into an application creation probably you will see the difference between survey and also case list that is where you get to dive deep into case management so for now let's start with surveys but mind you even after having um uh, an application that has only you created it on a survey you can long on add a follow-up to it that is possible using comic so so for my folder here you are saying that is the module for this module let um i will have to um, name the module all right uh, let me give it a name so that's when i plug it into the application into the uh, mobile phone i should be able to differentiate between if i have more than one module i should be able to finish it so this module i'll call it um let me say lesson one that is the name of the module lesson one mm. and uh, this will be what we what i have here that's the survey which i created earlier it is like the form inside the module so you can see this with a folder sign that is just like in the normal in the real sense where you have a folder and you have forms inside the folder right you have a folder which is a model and these are the forms inside the folder so you, you can add more forms inside this folder so so what i'll do now also is to name rename this folder again I want to name this folder not I don't want it to be survey. Let me see. Let me name it as first class. Or oh, first class. Or rather, let me see first class. Good. So my you can see I have labeled all what I I suppose to have labeled. I have labeled the project as a repeat of first lesson. And I have labeled the application as first lesson i have labeled the mode module as lesson one and also the so the form inside the module is labeled as first class 
so good now. Um, if you look at this interface, you can see what we have here. Um, looking like a phone. This is where we you can run your application before deploying it to the mobile phone. This is the application preview app preview. You can preview your app here, and there's what we call a data preview. I will show you when we start creating our phones. You can preview your app and also preview in depth of your data. So, and also here, if you look at this, please, um, you can see add question with positive sign or plus sign. It's telling you to add question in this form, right? So that is where we are going to click on. So I'm clicking on add question. Um, this what you are seeing now is the uh, variable type. You label every variable, each variable you want to use in this um, application you are building. The first thing here is in the text. Just in the sense that if your variable type is just a text, it doesn't contain a numeric sign, a numeric uh, alphabet. Though with text, you can also write. Uh, it also accept numeric values. But here, but click here as um, a position for capturing numeric variable, which is under this number. We're going to get to that. So, but if your variable type is just a text, we have string characters. You get it like name, sony, local government, whatever. If it's only contains string characters, to so use X. For multi choice, um, is a multiple select question where you have um, uh, you can still have multi choice and checkbox. Multi choice here means when you are trying to make selection on just um, we, are, we are trying to make just one selection of multiple um, options. The option has to be. It comes in terms of this or no. Are you married? Yes or no. You know, the reply is just one. You are expected to say either yes or no. You cannot um, pick the two together. So, by picking yes, you are, you are giving just one reply. If a reply is no, still you are, you are giving just how many reply? Just one reply. That is when you use a um, multi choice. You have uh, you have select just one option. So, but for checkbox, with checkbox, you can select multiple um, options. When it is required for you to sell, select more than one option, so you use um, a checkbox. For instance, if you have a question on how many crops do you plant this year, so you have options like corn, yam, tomato, rice, beans, whatever. So you know in this aspect, you are expected to select more than one option. Maybe if you have planted two, three, four crops, so with checkbox, you can make multiple selections. Your question right now is going to be in checkbox. Right, uh, so the next thing there is number for numeric characters. You, you are expected to use number if you are using if your variable type is numeric. So you are expected to come on this number. But you have the first three is an integer. If your response is going to be in whole number, no decimal. If just a whole number, it doesn't contain any decimal um, points. So you select integer, just integer characters, no decimal. So, and if your the next thing is phone number or numeric ID, if your question tag is um, in terms of a phone number, you want the respondent to provide this phone number, or you want your application to carry phone number, so you select the question tag to be phone number, or if it's an ID, numeric ID, so you use that. And uh, if your uh, response is going to be, it does seem it's going to contain a decimal point, decimal places, so you select a uh, this right uh, another thing again the next um variable type there is date so if a response is um in terms of dates so you select this if it's time you select time if it's it a time you select this for instance if um the question is maybe date of birth date of birth of the respondent maybe date of birth of the child whatever your planting dates your the date you started work whatever if it's just if questions on is it this type? So you set this. Um, if the time type, what time do you resume work daily? You, uh, you select this. And if it contains date and time, maybe you ask to provide the date and time. Um, you you did something. Maybe date. Um, what date do you plant your crop and what time? So you set the question type to date and time. Um, the next thing there is group. With um, this group here, for the first one group, we have a big group and question list. So there are so many things you can do with a group question. Maybe if you are trying to uh, you can see this one has a holder sign. So if you are trying to group a question in a folder, right? You you are you are grouping a question in a folder. Maybe you want to do something with it. Is a is a collective question. So you put it in a folder. This is a repeat group. You have a repeat question. Uh, we're going to treat them um, repeat question differently because it has 
some logics and also some manipulations is going to be treated differently. Also, question is one of the things to do with the question list is um, having a question in one page. You don't come here if you if you're creating a question, each question goes to a different page. Maybe if, are, if the first question is your name, it carries a page. Or for instance, you say first name, it carries one page. Second name carries another page. But if you want your questions to be in one page, if they're related question and you attempt to be on one page, so you use the question list. Um the next uh there is a multi multimedia capture. So if you you want your application to contain multimedia capture like images, you want to get an image of the uh, respondent, you you want the want the respondent to be snapped on the environment or whatever, or in case to be snapped, maybe a health condition, whatever. So you select an uh, image. You capture you want to capture the interview. You can make that provision and also if you don't want as the you don't want the recording to 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 be in the app you can use another medium to do your record and also a provision for uploading that recording in your application video capture if you want your app to continue video capture if you want to make a small video add it into the app like front like frontline health workers there are situations whereby um, a kind of a symptom of a particular disease is being recorded and uh, uh, is attached to the application so that whenever they are trying to like explain or inquire from the patients on a particular symptoms if the patient is not getting it right he can easily just play the video for the patient so that the patient can just um pick up from that video and to identify the symptoms of that disease for instance if you're trying to ask um, a patient on the condition of cell is he vomiting is he you see um having a um, rash on his body is he having this or that so if the patient is really getting the idea or maybe even though he's getting the idea you want to like um make him understand what you're trying to get from him more so you can yeah equally be the video for the patient for him to see and identify proper the signs and symptoms of that disease you are trying to uh, inquire from him also signature capture you can also add um signature capture in uh, your application maybe you want the respondents you want to get them signature of the respondent or maybe also the app user the mobile user you want to also get the signature of the mobile user so you add the signature capture also a label for labels it's um, another uh, variable type if your variable type is in label form you select label you are going to see how you can use label in terms of building your application uh, hidden value hidden value is a very wide um, and very logical aspect of app called here it is, it is um, a kind of variable that gives you um, an access to making um, calculations. I put that word calculation, you can calculate so many things you can calculate. Is it bits, percentage, anything that has to do with numeric calculation, calculations, and other little, little, um, uh, what do you call it, um, programming also. You can just write a little uh, syntax and run with uh, hidden value. Uh, advanced here is a GPS if um, you want to get the location of uh, the particular respondent or whatever we are trying to do your GPS capture it capture GPS and you can make it um you can make it physical in the app where the uh, uh, mobile user can just see and click on GPS capture and you can make it hidden as we use make it hidden the mobile user will not see it in the application but is there in the background recording the for every form to record the position the barcode scan if your application entails i'm um, using a barcode scan to use a barcode scan for instance there was this survey we did for sh society for family health and uh, it was on um description of mosquito nets so the first phase of the survey was issuing out advocacy asking and issuing out mosquito cards sorry um mosquito net cards you call it net card so you issue a card to each um what do you call it to each respondent you you you, you issue those cards to each um, respondent you visit so it is and those cards contain a barcode scanner it contains a barcode scanner and the barcode scanner is generated with um, a kind of uh, information for a particular net you are, you are giving us so it is this um it is that that the respondent is going to visit a particular facility present the card and uh, collect those nets 
collect the mosquito net uh, after issuing card. And what the the issue does, the mobile user does, is that whenever the respondent receives the facility to collect the card, all he does is scan the card. There is a provision for barcode scan. A computer application was built to be barcode scan uh, capture. So you use the computer app to scan the card and get the information of that um uh, what we call the respondent and also show the mosquito to the respondent. And the the last thing here is the password. You can read the password feature. For. So good. Let's dive into the main thing here. I hope to close this video just to to have a large view of the interface. So. Um, let's take for instance my my application has to do with um, uh, the first thing on my phone is for name. So I'll click, I'll click on test, you know, name the test property. So is it is very sorry? I will say okay, I'll call this first name. Right? You can see the display type, you go on the app sorry, you go to display type, display type sorry, and uh, Level the variable as first name. Sorry, first name. Right. So the question ID. You can see every question has a question ID. So you define the question ID also very well. This is the question ID. Whatever you are typing as a display text, it is reflecting as uh, on the question ID space also. So. If you don't want this question ID, you can equally click on it and type a different question ID. So, but for me, the first name as the question ID is okay for me. So I'm leaving it like that, All right? And mind you, this um, question ID you are seeing, it doesn't accept spacing. You don't, you cannot space. Once you try to um, create a space, it will just, when you click on the space bar, on your system it will instead of creating a space it will rather um, insert um, it will rather is instead an underscore for you instead of space so it doesn't accept spacing so and also it doesn't accept numbers right and also other characters all it accept is um um, alphabets so you have the next thing here is um you, uh, is you required if that question is very important is it not a question that can be skipped so you click on required and as you know first name name is very very important so i'll click on required so whenever the mobile user is using the application he cannot skip this question it must be answered if he tries skipping this question the the app will bring him back and this question will be highlighted in red telling him you have skipped an important question right so and uh, there are, you can see some other things here we have the display condition validation condition and mind you if your app is not you are not having this um logic um expression here you can equally come to this side click on this and enable um, the logic media advanced uh, windows so now mine is enabled already but for yours for the first time if you're using it it will not be enabled so you can just come here and enable it so with time we will get to see how you can use display condition validation condition default value whatever media and the rest so let's go to the next thing uh add another question we have added the first name let's see this is this is going to be the last name last name good so i'm not changing my question id i'm okay with it as the last name so but all i'll do i'll make this question required all right so the next question maybe i'll say um date of birth so i'll come under what date and click on date right so and i'll call this date of birth right so 
okay with the question id and it's also a required question good so and mind you um date of birth when you are trying to get the date of birth of a particular person you know date of birth cannot be in future it has to be in the past so to avoid mistakes um maybe the mobile user might make a mistake of um having the date of birth in future so to avoid that you come to validation condition you validate this question right you validate this question to avoid um putting the date of birth in future but rather in the past so and this is how you go about it um you just i'll just drag and drop this date of birth in expression can you see it you can see as if it is empty no it is not empty it is there as what just a dot in here when you are validating same question it comes in this sign just a dot but had it been i'm um, trying to validate using a different question it will not come in dots it will give me the question name this let me give you an instance maybe okay i want to validate with this name if i drop name here last name here you see it is showing me last name since i'm not working on the last name but since i am working on this same variable date of birth so if i drag it and drop it will just give me a dotted sign uh, right so that is okay so now trying to validate this question to be in the past not in future i'll tell it okay I will tell the app to make sure all response on this um, date of birth should be should be less than um, less than or equal to today. Why I said less than or equal to? Maybe if the question is on a newborn, you know, you um, he can be his date of birth can be today. The, he can be. Uh, giving birth today so but me if it's dealing with just an adult so you can just say okay date of birth should be le less than today so this is how you do write the syntax so less than today hmm? parenthesis right so that's it so for every response on this date of birth it can never be in future it has to be in the past so good, I will save it. So the next question will be, um, uh, let's say phone number. Phone number of the respondent. So and in this case of phone number, I will say, okay, phone number. Uh, phone, sorry. Phone number and for the questions type I'm still okay with the phone number I'll validate this to be an important question uh, and also I want to validate this um, phone number you know phone number here in my country Nigeria our phone number is um, in 11 digits when you are considering the first zero but if you are not considering the first zero the phone number is usually 10 digits but let's follow the normal standard uh, for, with the 11 digits so now i want to validate the question the phone number to be 11 digits so that whenever there is um, a mistake in typing whether if the mobile user types anything less than 11 digits he cannot move forward the app will prompt him to come back and correct that those uh, digits to be 11 digits so now in this in this case i'm not writing the syntax here there is nothing i'll drag and drop uh, but rather i'll go to i'll go to uh, what do you call it i'll go to show advanced mode and type just a little um, syntax i'll tell it string length i'll tell the system to make sure the string length hmm? in parentheses of this question Sorry. 
string length of this question must be 11 digits. Uh, let me correct the length spelling G, right? So I'm now telling the system or the app to make sure that this string length, the length of um, digits for this particular question must be 11 digits. Anything less than, less than or greater than 11 digits should not be accepted. So I'll save this. So you can see I have now validated this question. I have now validated this question to accept only 11 digits. Anything less than or greater than 11 digits is not accepted. So uh, my question, my question ID, I'll still make it um, phone number. I'll leave it as phone number. Hmm. Hmm. So the next question should be, let's say gender. Gender, you know, it will have um, two options, whether male or female. So this is when I will use what? I will use my multi-choice. I will use my multi-choice. I will call this gender. So I will make it a required question. And you can see it is uh, now telling me, asking me to add a choice. Since it is a multiple a choice question, so I will say one. The first choice should be male and uh, my second cho another choice is female. So in this aspect, you have to select whether male or female. Uh, and the, I'll add another question by saying, okay, uh, okay, let me add a question that will warrant me to use an if else condition. So I will say, add a question that has to do with um, a multi choice too. Uh, and I will say here, are you pregnant? This is a question. Are you pregnant? Uh, you know the the option should be in yes or no okay option one is yes but the second option is what no good so are you pregnant so i want you to look at um something here very important uh, this question and are you pregnant cannot does not apply to this option on gender it doesn't apply to a male respondent you have to be a female to be pregnant right though i don't know whether there are situations where male um, get pregnant but um, as far as far as i know in nigeria it is only female that give birth so this question now only implies on the male a female respondent so I want to create a validation, a condition rather, to make sure it is only a female respondent that this question will pop up for her. If the option selected is female, so that is when this question on are you pregnant will pop up. But if the response is male, it will skip this option, this question on are uh, are you pregnant and go to the next question. Sorry, let me. I'm a kind of exhausted. That is why you can see I'm making some little errors in my spelling. So let me correct this. Are you pregnant? Good. So this is how we go about um, validating this display condition, or rather, is a display condition. So I'll now tell this. Um, I'll now tell the app to. Okay. I'll go to display condition. I'll tell it to only display this question if the response for the previous question is female. You can see the if condition. If the response for the previous question is female, 
then come up with this question the next question are you pregnant but rather if the um, response for this question is what is male then skip the next question of are you pregnant so this is how we go about validating it so i'll now select um i'll now tell the system okay if this response uh, sorry the previous question if the response for this question is female you can see if it's equal to female then display the next question so you can see for my display condition for this question are you pregnant so this is what it implies if the if the response for gender is female then display the question on are you pregnant but if otherwise if it's male don't display this question i hope you understand what i'm trying to do here so good so um let's add another question to round it up i think we have almost an hour i want to show you some other things okay let's add um, an integer questions an integer question like um, number how many children do you have okay I'll see now how many how many children do you have okay. How many children do you have? So I'll make it an important question. So I think it's okay. Um, I, I, I think the questions are okay for this lesson. Uh, okay, let's try to see what we have done. There are some things, some things that will come up. I would like, want to like show you. So, uh, if you remember from the beginning of what I've been doing, I've not saved this form. So, I want to like finish everything before I will save it. So, I'll go ahead and save. That is my own way of doing my work. But if you feel like saving yours, fine. You can go ahead and save it. You can go ahead and save your uh, be saving each question as you are creating it but in my own case I, I prefer to finish everything before saving it so now let me go to the app preview this and look at um the app i've created so far so you yeah, i'll click on start um and you, you can see the module here what i have here lesson one lesson one and you can see the form inside first class i'll click on first class so and the first question here is the name i'll say okay my name is jafar my first name is jafar and as i told you there will be need for you if there will be need for you to have some questions on a particular page so you like you create a question a list to have those all the, those questions in a particular page because um the, the default so come here setting is creating questions on different pages for each question you have created it will carry a particular page but if you want to have um some question in just one page so there is a way you go about it using the question list but let's go ahead with this i will show you how to put all the questions in one particular uh, page so my first name is Jaffa my second name is Lawa huh? then the next question says um, date of birth okay my date of birth now is um, 15 September 1984 so I'll go to 1984 Oh, let me just select anything. This is just okay. 1984 is here. September, you change it to September. Oh, let me just leave it in May. 
15th good so that is my date of birth so you can see now let me show you something about the validation it has accepted uh, my response now i told you i have validated these questions to be in the past not in the future because you cannot have a date of birth in the future you can only have expected delivery date in the future but not the date of birth in the future so now let me change this response to uh, to future and you will see how the app is going to reject my response so now um in future is going to be like um, maybe in 20 we're in 2022 right may 2022 15th may 2022 i knew good may 15 2022 did you see the pop-up message the answer is outside the allowed range so i mind you if you don't want to see this um uh what do you call it this message on the question the answer is outside the allowed range you can also have your own personal validation message right you can have your validation message to tell the the system the kind of message you want to be to be there hmm? we'll come to that so let me let me correct this to be in the past, not future. Good. So, it has now accepted this question. So, this response, sorry, phone number. So, also phone number, my phone number is 00070353349. This question has, I have validated this question too. This is how, how many characters, 11 characters. If I delete one character, making 10, you see, it is telling me the question is outside the, outside the allowed range. I can also have um, a validation message for this question. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, if I make it 11, now it's accepted. Okay, let me make it um, 12. You see, it has rejected the question. So let me make it 11. So the next question is, okay, gender. If I select male, it will skip the next question on, are you pregnant and go to how many children do you have? But if I select female, it will display the next question on, are you pregnant? Did you see that? So let me see yes and uh, how many children do you have let's say seven i don't have seven children no. then your compass uh, form is completed and uh, you go ahead and submit right okay now i want to show you how to have some questions on one page instead of having each question on different page so now this is how you go about it. You add, you make the question to be a question list. Let me reduce this. Okay, I'll add the question list as the first uh, question there. So now a question list. So if you like, you label the question. If you uh, question um, list, if you like, you don't label it. But let me see. Let me call this. Um, let me call this question. Bio. Bio info information. Let me just say bio info. So bio bio data. That is the question list. So now I'll have to add all these questions to the question list so you can see I'm just dragging the trees and dropping it in the question list so good so I've saved it uh, and again let me show you how to have 
validation message instead of the default validation message for all the questions are validated um, uh, date of birth you can see okay you, you can see the validation message instead of that default validation message let me see okay if there is an error this is what it display to you to tell you date of birth cannot be in the future right so i'm okay with this one number two i validated phone number so i will say must be must be 11 digits So I think those are the questions I've validated. I'll save it. So now let's go to the app preview and see what we have. I'll refresh it and see how our questions are going to be on one page. And good. So you can see now all my questions are on one page, not on different pages. Uh, let's say my first name is Jaffa. Last name, Laura. Date of birth. Okay, let me show you. Let's say my date of birth is in future. You can see the validation message. Instead of the default validation message, uh, message it has now changed to what I provided earlier. Date of birth cannot be in future, right? Okay, good. So let me make it. Um, in the past uh, good so accepted so now phone number uh, my phone number is zero seven zero three five three three four nine three three so if i have anything less than 11 digits it will pop up the customized message i just customize must be 11 digits right uh -huh. so now the next question on gender now you Look at this one very well now. You can see from what we have here in the app preview, it is not bringing up the next question, are you pregnant? It is just showing us gender and it has jumped to the last question and how many children do you have? So when I click on male as my gender, it will take me to the last question, how many children do you have? It will still not pop up the question and are you pregnant? But if I click on female, you can see it has now bring up the question on are you pregnant i hope you you can see how the condition has displayed it is said the condition here is if if the reply is male don't show the next question that is on are you pregnant but if the reply is female so you bring up the next question on are you pregnant yes how many children do you have let's say five and that is the end of the the form so and this is also the end of um it marks also the end of our first lesson for today so as usual if you have any question you can drop it on the comment a box in the uh, YouTube or rather you can drop it in my inbox on LinkedIn or you can directly um, send a message on WhatsApp the, uh, that has been my number I've been putting here 0703533493 for those in Nigeria and if you're not in Nigeria you remove the first zero and add the our code uh, that is plus two three four seven zero three five three three so thank you very much hmm.